My name is Harlan Brownlee, and I work in the art form of dance, and I integrate science concepts, specifically the weather and astronomy. When you think about science concepts, you're talking about natural phenomena, you're talking about physical processes, and so when you look at dance, of course, dance is physical, it's movement. So the two really connect nicely together because you're able to use movement as a way to show those physical processes, to show those physical phenomena, to show uh, how things will transform. When I work in arts integration, what I do is I first give the kids a foundation in dance and in movement. So we work with the elements of dance, we work with ideas of structured improvisations, and we work with choreography so that they have a basic foundation to work from. In a very real way, what we're, that we're working on is really what I would call a model for movement management. To provide enough structure so that they can explore the concepts but without it getting out of control. And then once they have that foundation, we integrate the science concepts. For example, if uh, we were working in astronomy, they would use the laws, those actual physical laws of inertia and gravity, and they would demonstrate that to me through their movement and how they interacted with one another. So they might have two of the kids moving around each other, demonstrating to me the idea of stasis where both inertia and gravity are in balance. Or they might also show me how uh, gravity took over and these two bodies that were moving through space came together and actually became one. Or they could show me how two bodies were in stasis and another body came along and pulled those out of stasis. So they're using the dance as a way to help me or help me see it and help demonstrate to me what they understand about these concepts. They'll show their work to one another. And the question that's asked of the students is, what did you observe? What did you notice? And then as they begin to talk about what they notice, that leads us to the next place, which is, why did you make those decisions? So then we can begin to see, how are they thinking? Then what we can do then is we can also revise. So we can say, OK, now if you were to do that again, what would you change about it? What would you do differently? and then give them the opportunity to do that. So it's a reiterative process that you're going over and over. And in many ways, that certainly mimics what we look at when we look at good writing or any kind of process where someone's refining uh, a certain idea. Another concept that uh, students can use is the idea of density. When we talk about density, we're talking about particles in space, and we're talking about how close those particles are. Well, we can relate that to one's own personal space and the general space. I will tighten down the space by making less space available to them and they are representing the atoms or the molecules and as they get closer together they begin to understand that that's denser because the molecules are closer together and then when the space opens back up for them they realize that's less dense and then we can relate that to states of matter. So dance is really a great connector with science in particular because of that physical action, that physical motion that the two both share in common. Because when learning is fun, when it's um, enjoyable, we remember and we learn more quickly. And I do believe children really do enjoy themselves when they have the opportunity to move and to express themselves in a physical way.